What is the meaning of sin? Well, Scripture tells us sin is rebellion against God's law. It is lawlessness, according to 1 John 3, 4. Sin is not a popular subject today in the world and sadly now in the church. You hear pastors all the time watering down the reality of sin by calling it a mistake or a failure. But it is rank rebellion against God's will, and God's will is his word. So anybody who defies or disobeys the word of God is in sin. In fact, um, sin is also labeled as unbelief in the word of God. Romans 14, 23, and I'm reading here. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. There are two kinds of sin. Sin can be boiled down to two kinds. First, the sin of commission, doing what God forbids, like lying or stealing, for example. And then there's the sin of omission, failure. This is failure to do what God requires. James 4.17 says, To him that knows to do good and does it not, to him it is sin. Isaiah 59, 2 tells us that when we do sin, it separates us from the presence of God. The origin of sin came from Satan, and the first sin that was committed by him was the sin of pride, thinking we know better than God. Sin then entered into humanity when Adam and Eve disobeyed God's command not to eat of the fruit from the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. When Adam sinned, all his posterity, all of his descendants to come after him sinned with him, Jesus being the lone exception, of course. We are all born with a sin nature, a natural proclivity to disobey God and to follow our own self-will. We inherit the sin nature from Adam the moment we are conceived. David said in Psalm 51, 5, in sin did my mother conceive me. Not that conception is sinful, but David is, said, David is saying there, the moment I was conceived, I, I was a sinner. Another meaning for sin comes from the New Testament Greek word hamartia. Hamartiology is the study of sin in systematic theology. And the word literally means, hamartia literally means to miss the mark, meaning that all of us have missed the mark and failed to obey God with perfect righteousness. The scripture says that all of mankind has sinned. You will see it taught throughout scripture. It's called the universality of sin. And the most famous passage underscoring that is Romans 3, 23. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Sin produces death, Paul said in Romans, for the wages of sin is death. And the prophet Ezekiel said here, and I read again from Scripture, he said in Ezekiel 18, 20, the soul that sins will die. You and I are sinners not because we sin, rather we sin because we are sinners. Sin produces two things. It produces physical death when the soul is separated from the body and spiritual death. All people are born spiritually dead in their trespasses and sins, Ephesians 2, 1 through 2. Sin condemns us. It separates us from God. Sin is rebellion against God's authority and disobedience to his word. The ultimate destiny for those who are in sin is damnation and eternal punishment in the lake of fire. Sounds pretty bad. Well, it is bad, but praise God in his mercy and grace, he sent us a savior from sin, and that savior is the Lord Jesus Christ. He has come to save us and John 3.16 is the most wonderful passage in Scripture that tells us Jesus came to save us from the awful consequences of sin. We're all sinners. Therefore, all of us need a Savior. And to that end, Paul says this about Jesus the Savior from sin in 2 Corinthians 5.21. He who knew no sin became a sin offering for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the only remedy for sin. Nothing else will do. Look to Jesus Christ that you might be healed. 
from the penalty, power, and punishment of sin.